Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll move on this listener right now in your gentle, loving, powerful, and merciful way as they listen to this message from All Nations Church in Tallahassee. Amen. I'm speaking on the theme, Engaging the Holy Spirit Through Service. I believe that God, who for many years tried to get the attention of man by sending us different kinds of prophets. He sent us Elijah, he sent us Moses, he sent Isaiah. The Bible says in Hebrews that he's speaking to us now even by his son Jesus. And so thank God for sending Jesus because after years of sending men to represent him, God finally got it right. And he got it right in Jesus, amen. And when he got it right in Jesus, then he began to think about you and me. And so this morning, I would encourage you to get ready for an experience with the Lord. I want you to stretch out your hand, close your eyes, just think about the Lord, and say, Father, I receive what you brought me this morning. Say it with me, Father, I receive what you brought me this morning. Say it one more time, Father, I receive what you brought me this morning. Finally, Father, I receive what you brought me this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, to start my message, I believe that the cross of Jesus Christ, as we get ready for this Easter, it's next week is Palm Sunday, and after that, we think about the death and resurrection of Jesus, is actually an invitation for everyone who would believe in his name. Amen. The cross of Jesus is an invitation. Like many from Bible times, we wondered why when God became a man, he had to die. He must have died beyond us having a breakthrough. He must have died beyond us having kids and having a good marriage. He must have died so that we would have more than a job. He must have died so that we could have more than a big church and a great ministry. He must have died so that we'll become more wealthy than we are. There has to be a greater reason. And like in the video, the mother of Jesus is like, why does my son have to die? Every year around this time, there's this question that rings in our hearts. Oh, why, oh, why does Jesus have to die? And this morning, I'm going to spend some time and talk about that there's a reason beyond our redemption. There's a reason beyond us just coming to church. Why did Jesus have to die for me? Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. For it is fitting for God that he, for whose sake are all things, through whom are all things, to bring many sons into glory and make the author and the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. One of the reasons why most Christians are not getting the best package, the best benefits out of Easter is that we do not know why. Hosea 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Without us properly understanding the reason for the coming of the Son of Man, we will just sing about Easter and even shed a tear or even invite an Easter bunny to the cross when they did not show up. The Easter bunny did not die for you. And so during the time of Easter, it's very interesting when he shows up. Listen to me. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, we understand, the Bible made it, made it very clear to us that one of the purposes of God sending Jesus to die, because unless a corn of wheat will fall to the ground or die, into the ground and die, it will abide alone. God's purpose of bringing many sons and daughters into glory was his purpose of the cross. It was not just for us to be saved from hell, but it was for us to be made even into the likeness of the perfect one called Jesus. 
And so when God was done living his life through Jesus, he said, now I have got this as the winning formula. And so I can go into mass production. Hallelujah. He, he saw that it was possible that a man can live subject to him and do his works. And so by the death of Jesus Christ, he now was ready to give birth to the church, you and me. Those who would come in after the order of Christ, after an incorruptible seed, one who could work with God and work for God. So the invitation of the cross begins with our redemption for the forgiveness of our sins. So we are redeemed as children, but God's calling for us is the adoption of sons and daughters. That each one of us can be made like Jesus. Jesus in how, in, in the likeness, in the power of God. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. I pray that the sharing of your faith will become effective because you take accurate knowledge of every good thing that is in Christ. You know, Psalm 103 says that, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. It's so possible that you're entitled to setting benefits. So I remember I applied for a setting job and when I got the job, I did not get acquainted with the benefits associated with the job. Because in other jobs, I had to pay so much for insurance, health insurance. But this job came with a fully paid insurance from my dental, from my optical, and they were matching my 401k, but I did not know, so I was not taking advantage of it. Many Christians have come to the cross for salvation, but have not taken time to properly acknowledge the full package of what it means to receive Christ. And this morning, I want to begin to share with you what really it means for us to receive the sacrifice of Jesus. It goes beyond us having our sins forgiven. It's an invitation of God to share in the very likeness of Christ. The Holy Spirit was sent on earth to reveal Jesus and Jesus to us. If I say during this time of Easter, who is Jesus to you? Someone will say the Lamb of God. You say he's my Savior. Someone will say he's the one who was resurrection and the dead. He's the firstborn from the dead. He's the Son of God. But in Hebrews 6 verse 20, where my main message is today, we begin to see Jesus as a forerunner who is an eternal priest. So Jesus comes onto the scene and he has one thing in mind, you and me. He comes on the scene and he recognizes that I must do things because there is coming a people after me who have to be able to do things the same way I'm doing it. And so let's look at Hebrews chapter 6. Let's look at it, verse 20. The Bible says that where Jesus, the forerunner, has entered on our behalf. Hallelujah. So Jesus is coming in as a forerunner, and he's entering the most holy place, not for his own behalf, but on our behalf. He has become a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So one of the reasons Jesus is being revealed as a priest is that he's doing it as a forerunner. He's doing it as a pioneer. He's doing it as the first person to do it because there's a generation coming after him who have to do the same thing. Most of the time when we come to Christ, we know about the blessing of becoming, getting healed and getting saved. But I'm here to share with you that Jesus was also a forerunner of the priesthood. He was a forerunner of what it means to represent God and to stand for God. When I think about the word priest uh, in my hometown, the first thing you think about priest is the fetish priest. You know, in, in my hometown, in the local villages, before the gospel came, there were a lot of people who practiced traditional re religion. They would do voodoo, and the, the revelation of a fetish priest was a man who was close to the deity, who could speak to the deity on our behalf, and who could also speak to us on behalf of the deity. He was almost like a representative when you, if you come from a Catholic background, when I talk about the word priest, you think about a man in a black garment with a white collar who you can say, Father, I have sinned, forgive me. And he would serve you the communion, right? And he would share with you a gospel and he would lead you through the sacraments. So the word priest is not anything new to mankind. 
So Jesus coming in on the scene builds upon that. We must understand that the Old Testament is but a shadow of the things to come. And so in Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 to 6, I do for verse 6, and unto me Israel shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the Israelites. I want to start my message today by saying that in God's heart, he decided that a people will be set apart, a nation will be set apart to serve as his priests. His vision was always that he would have a nation. He would have a collective people who would come and serve him. And so in Exodus chapter 19 verse 6, he says that Israel shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But Israel rejected God's holy invitation. And so we know very well as we read our Bible that Exodus 28 verse 1, the Bible says that God speaking through Moses says that you shall bring Aaron and his sons from the tribe of Levi because Israel says no I have a remnant every time God does not find a nation and does not find a people he will find a remnant because Levi said yes there was the establishment of the Aaronic priesthood sons and daughters of Aaron forever will stand and offer up holy sacrifice before the Lord and so we see the Aaronic priesthood established in the earth where men and women who were born to the house of Levi will stand as priests. So Aaron has four sons and from that the genealogy is seen. All the way to the time of Jesus, Zechariah comes in Luke chapter 1 verse 5 from the course of Abia. Abia is actually of the eighth course of the priest. So by the time of David, what happens is that there are 24 courses. It's not just the four sons now. There are 24 courses of priests. And so Zechariah comes from that and he serves as a priest, a high priest. Now, Jesus comes onto the scene to establish the new covenant, and he does something completely different. He's thinking about how this can move beyond just a family, because God's vision was never for a few. You know, most of us, when we think about serving in the house of God, we think about the fivefold ministry. You think about the pastor, the prophet, the apostle, the teacher, the evangelist. Just like the Israelites, they're like, oh, maybe God has to choose a specific people. So God chose what? The Levites and the priests. And then of course, God was using prophets for his purposes in the earth. But God's vision was always for a group of people. And once he found Levi to say yes, and the prophets to say yes, he still had a dream that he can have a group of people who will say yes to him. I wrote here in my notes, some of the things priests would do. In my study, I found something interesting. Most of the time, when we think about the priest, we just think about church. So you, you think about the priest and you think about them offering sacrifice and offering prayer. In the Bible, we see priests did not just offer sacrifice upon the altar and offer prayer. They actually led worship. So worship leaders, you're priests. And then they were involved in the cleansing of the temple and the preparation of the temple. But also, the priests had another thing I want to talk about. They had an assignment in the community. Even though they were priests consecrated unto God, they were set up in the community as teachers and judges and scribes and keepers of the peace. In other words, if the church is going to rise up and become priests, we must recognize that our responsibility is not just tied to the four walls of the church, it's also tied to the community. We're supposed to go forth in the community and offer that priesthood to the Lord. And so Jesus becomes the forerunner. Why? Because he wants to establish a new order. Whenever I go into a new place, people say, this is not how it's been done. And I said, I agree, this is not how it's been done, but there is another way to do the same thing. Amen. The first time you eat fried chicken, it tastes so good. And you can have it with any sauce, but till you are introduced to properly marinated, baked, and broiled chicken, you can't tell the difference. So, you, at home, you might be used to your mom preparing fried chicken, and one day you go to eat somewhere, and someone prepares a properly marinated, slowly cooked, broiled, baked chicken. 
And you're like, I can taste all the spices in this chicken. It looks like there's another way of doing chicken that I did not know. Beloved, there are multiple ways of doing the same thing, but there's only one way that leads to God. So there are other ways by which something can be done. So with the coming of Christ, we see that the priesthood which was tied to one family will now be extended to the whole world. So the Bible says Jesus, so if you have time, from Hebrews chapter 5 to Hebrews 10 chapters, you see that Jesus comes after another order, and it's called the order of Melchizedek, to establish a priesthood that will give you and me a chance. You and me a chance to be able to serve God. In 1 Corinthians 15, 49, the Bible says, just as we've been born in the likeness of the earthly man, so we shall be born in the likeness of the heavenly man. So you and me were made just like Adam in our sin, but God's vision is that each of us will be made like Jesus. You know, where children used to sing that song in Sunday school, I want to be just like Jesus. You want to be just like Jesus, God wants you to begin to function just like Jesus. And one of the things he wants you to do is to allow him to make you into a priest like Jesus, into one who can serve God like Jesus. Now, when we look at this, you might easily get confused. Let's look at Mark chapter 3, verse 14. Whenever a priest was called, there were interesting things the priest would do. I talked about the priest serving in the temple, the priest serving in the community, but that's not where it started. Whenever a priest will be called, Mark chapter 3, verse 14, In Mark 3, 14, Jesus comes in establishing his ministry and representing heaven. And the Bible says to us that Jesus calls for the disciples that they will be with him so that he will send them forth. Many years ago, when I heard this gospel that God has a plan, one of the invitation, one of the inheritance in Christ is that I can serve God. I was so excited. But then my pastor says, I know you're excited, Leo, but remember Mark 3, verse 14. What does it say? And Jesus would call the 12 that they would be with him, so he sent them forth. One of the first assignments of priests when they were set aside to serve God is that they were called for personal consecration. They were called to be with the Lord. So Jesus calls the 12 and he's about to use this 12 to preach the gospel to the nations of the world. But he says that he calls them so that they will be with him first. When priests were called to service, they had to go through a period of personal cleansing and personal devotion to the Lord. I know we're excited about working for God, but God is saying that for us to be able to effectively work for him, we must learn to walk with him. Without learning to walk with him, without learning to offer your priesthood directly to the Lord, there is no place for external ministry. And so the disciples had to learn how to pray, how to fast, how to see God's face. Fulfilling your priesthood is tied to your personal walk with the Lord. You must learn first to be with the Lord. There is no room for public ministry without private devotion to the Lord. And so Jesus came and says, oh yes, Peter, you're going to be a great apostle in the nations, but you must learn this first. You must learn to be with me. You must learn the way of prayer, the way of devotion, the way of discipline. There are too many people who are excited in doing the works of God. You know, when we're singing the song, I don't know why Jesus loved me. Many a times we come to church and we see the power of the Holy Spirit move. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that you will receive the, Holy, the power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But the Holy Spirit doesn't just come upon us to give us a fuzzy feeling. He doesn't come upon us just to cry and to have goosebumps. For so long, the church has been overexcited on weeping and crying and laughing because of the presence of God. The Bible said that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come unto me so that you can be witnesses. So the encounter of God, the personal walk with God is tied to the work of God. If we decouple the two, then the encounter has no purpose. 
We are encountering him because he has work and he needs hands and feet who have to do the work on earth. If we receive encounters from God and we do not end up doing the works of God, we are frustrating the grace of God. The time has come for believers to answer this great call. There's an invitation to go beyond us just coming to church. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. The Bible says, And you are living stones being built up into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices unto God and to Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, verse 9 and 10, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession. Verse 10, you were not once a people, but now have become a people. Beloved, how many Jews do we have in this church? We have one Jew. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. We pray a prayer for you. If you were not a Jew, you had no business serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We were excluded. We were excluded. So the Bible says we were not a people, but because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, we who were not a people have become a people. But not only that, we who had no place serving God, because listen, my father is not Levi. My father is, my grandfather is not Abraham. My great grandfather is not Abia. Actually, my physical father is not a priest. And so, by virtue of the old covenant, I have no place in serving God. And I'm not talking about preaching, in serving God. Because the service of God was limited to the Levites and the priests. They were the ones who could serve. Hallelujah. But because of Jesus Christ, each one of us have been given this awesome invitation that those who were not a chosen priesthood, who could, were excluded from doing worship. So if you wanted to do worship and your father's name was not Levi, you could not do worship. In this case, if your father's name is not Tom, you can't do worship. No, it's a joke. <laughs> The key to doing worship in this church is that you belong to Christ. Amen. The key to being an usher is that you belong to Christ. Amen. We are empowered to serve because he set the example. He was our forerunner. He brought back the priesthood for them who believe. Each one of us have received an invitation to be the arms and the hands of Jesus right here on earth. How do priests get prepared for the call of ministry? How do people want to serve God in this church? I see only two hands. I see one more at the back. Three more. It's not enough to say God has called me. It's not enough to say I want to fulfill my calling. I want to be a priest. There is a protocol in the Bible how the, those who will serve the Lord were prepared. Let's look at it. Leviticus chapter 8 verse 30. <laughs> so whenever a priest would be called to the work, apart from personal devotion to the Lord, the priest would have something unique happen to them. Let's read it from the Bible. In Leviticus chapter 8 verse 30, the Bible says, And Moses took the anointing oil and the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon his children. Another version, verse, it says, Exodus 29, 19 to 21. And take the ram and Aaron's sons and lay your hands on the head and put upon them blood upon their earlobes and put the blood upon their thumbs and blood upon their feet and sprinkle the remaining on the altar. So what would happen is that for them to be able to be prepared for the priesthood, they had to have an application of the blood and of the oil. Yeah. 
without the application of the blood and the oil, they will not stand to serve in the presence of God. Beloved, as we stand here, Colossians 2 verse 13 says that, but now in Christ Jesus, we who were far away have been brought close by the blood of Jesus. In other words, your consciousness of the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus qualifies you to serve in his house, to serve as a priest. You do not need to work anything new. You need to recognize that without the power of the blood of Jesus, we are disqualified from serving. It's not about your intelligence. It's not about how, how brilliant you can speak. I, I used to be almost like a stammerer, someone who could not speak. I would always struggle when I had to even mention my name. <laughs> but there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus to be able to take a little boy who could not speak and redeem me from my sins and empower me to serve in this house. Also, there was the application of the oil. The application of the oil for the priest was to set them apart for the holy work of God. Beloved, as you sit here in the church, we see that in without the power of the Holy Spirit, it is frustrating to do the work of God. How many people serve in this church? Sometimes it's so hard. It's hard because we're doing it in the flesh. Because Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. By the power of the Holy Spirit and only by the power of the Holy Spirit are we set apart to serve in this house. This is not working for McDonald's. This is not working for Amazon. This is not working for your company. This is working for the God of heaven and earth. And it must be done his way. And to do it his way, you must do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Time will fill me to tell you, one of the first components of the oil is myrrh. <laughs> it's symbolic of the bitterness. It's symbolic of the high price of taking up your cross and following Jesus. There is no man who will come after Jesus' example into serving the Lord who will not take up his cross and follow him. There are so many in the church who are trying to serve the Lord and they are not having the mere component work on them. They are not taking up their cross. They are not sacrificing anything to be able to offer the sacrifice. If pastor will tell you how many sleepless nights, how many times he had to be away from the things he loved to be able to fulfill his calling, it will be a surprise. I want to say this morning, as I bring my message to a close, that it's time for us to accept God's invitation and his invitation into this great and Inheritance that each one of us can serve by the power of the blood and of the oil, even in Jesus' name. God is calling you to embrace this invitation. Many years ago, the, the year was 2009, and I'd been going to church, reading my Bible and praying, and I, I heard that I was just tired of church. I'd be singing in the choir and I'd been being an usher and doing a lot of things. And I said, Holy Spirit, there has to be a better way. This morning, I'm here to tell you there is a better way. I said, Holy Spirit, there has to be a better way. I need the power of the Holy Spirit upon my life so I can serve God and serve God with power. This morning, there are many in the church, you know God is calling you, but you can't find the strength to fulfill and answer the call. And in 2009, I prayed and the power of the Holy Spirit came upon me. And since that day, my serving God was with gladness. My serving God was different because I was not doing it by might or by power, but by the Holy Spirit. It is right now important for us to actively learn to walk personally with with God and learn to work not just in the church but in our community. There is a journey for us to have revelation, consecration, and commitment to becoming like Jesus in every way possible. This is a call for each one of us to embrace his great inheritance and become an agent for change in the world. Stand up with me. Let's pray. Jesus is calling many to do diverse things. When I received the anointing of God upon my life, my pastor said, you, you see those chairs? Can you go carry those chairs? I said, okay. 
And then my pastor says, you see, you see, we were doing this song in the church. Can you go sing it? I was like, I, I don't know if I have the voice vocals for it. One of the beautiful things about serving Jesus is that when we do it from the place of love, he sends us the power to do it. This morning, there's so many under the sound of my voice. You are saying, I don't think I've been called. I don't think I have the strength to obey God. I don't think I can do more for God. My schedule is full. I want to say by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can make a difference. We want to pray this morning. You want to pray to God and you want to say, Father, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the power of redemption. As we come into Easter, thank you for the power of the blood to wash away my sins. Begin to pray right now. Father, thank you for the power of the blood for washing away our sins, Lord. Washing us and cleansing us to make us meet vessels each one of us have been called and chosen by God to be vessels of honor for his good will not just in the church but everywhere we go we are vessels there's a treasure in earthen vessels there's a treasure in you there's a treasure in me and it's time to say yes to the Lord Father, we receive this in Jesus' name. Secondly, I want you to pray to God. I'm not going to call anyone for it this morning. I want you to pray and say, Lord, I need the power of the Holy Spirit upon my life so that I can serve you in whichever way possible. You know, Pastor, when I was coming for this service, I felt a very unique anointing come upon this church this Sunday. And the Lord says that one of the gifts of the Spirit is the gifts of administration. And the Lord said the operation of the gifts of administration will begin to operate at a greater level in this church starting this Sunday. The Lord said there are people in this church, he has called you out and anointed you with gifts of administration. And the Lord said, I'm going to empower you to come in and help take the ministry to the next level. I want you to pray and raise your hand and say, Father, send the power of the Holy Spirit upon me. Send the power power of the Holy Spirit upon me so I can serve you. Begin to pray right now. Send the power of the Holy Ghost. Send the power of the Holy Spirit. It shall not be by might. It shall not be by power. It's going to be by the Holy Ghost. So send the power of your spirit upon me. Send your power upon me as I serve as an usher and as I serve as a lawyer in the marketplace and as I serve as an educator. Send the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of your spirit, Lord. We say yes. We say yes. We step out of our fears. We step out of our past and we say yes we will run we will run and serve you we will serve you and so father send your power send your spirit upon us even in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord just talk to the lord and receive father breathe upon us in a special way <laughs> a special way this morning Help us to be able to take up our priesthood. Take up a time to serve you. Our world is full of darkness. Many do not know Jesus. As we prepare for Easter, be that vessel of God to speak a word, to bring someone who is lost. Be an extension of the arm of God. Laborers are so few than ever before. You want to say, Lord, send the laborers. Lord, send me. Send me to do your work. Even in Jesus' name, lift your hands, Father. Rest on us. Rest on us. Rest on us. Use us, Lord. Use us for every good work you want. Anything you want to use my life for, use it. Some of you, God is calling you for missions, to help with our missions department, and calling you to a prayer ministry, and calling you to serve in administration. Today, you want to say, Lord, like the tribe of Levi, I am a remnant. I will say yes, Lord. Use me. Use me, Holy Spirit. Use me, Holy Spirit. Tom will lead us in that song. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You made it to the end of the message, and now what? Is God leading you to make a change? Are you needing a good church home where you can grow and help others grow as you fulfill your part in the body of Christ? Then we invite you to join us at All Nations Church on Sharer Road in Tallahassee, a multicultural church founded on the truth of God's Word and the power of the Holy Spirit. Our Sunday morning service is at 10.30 and Wednesday night service at 7. 
plus youth group and kid power and small groups and more. For more information, visit our website, allnationstallahassee.com.